Our job is to maintain the system that reduces those risks of those really large floods. So many people don't realize that a major part of our uh, uh, mission is flood control. Tarrant Regional Water District was established in 1924, a direct response to a massive flood in Fort Worth two years earlier. Our missions, water supply and flood control. It's not something you normally think about, but as recent events have shown, floods can leave a trail of devastation in their wake. So this is a story about our flood control program and the things we're doing to manage the risk, protect life and safeguard property along the Trinity River. An important distinction here, we're not talking about the flooding you might see on city streets. When the district thinks about flood control, we're thinking about the river. Those larger events that get out of the river banks and you know, out into the flood plains that can affect people's homes. Now, you can get flooding in the city along the streets that can affect people's homes, but really our domain is on the river, along the lakes. And, and our job is really to reduce the risk that those floods can harm people or businesses, can make it difficult for emergency management personnel to get around and get to the people that need help. The district's flood management system relies on reservoirs in the constructed floodway that runs through the heart of Fort Worth. We began to build water supply reservoirs that also acted as flood control reservoirs as the Fort Worth population continued to grow. Bridgeport and Eagle Mountain, when they were first built, uh, they were some of the earliest multi-purpose reservoirs in the country. These two reservoirs are located on the West Fork of the Trinity River, upstream of Fort Worth, and they can be lifesavers when heavy downpours arrive. And so that's what we do is we capture that water in the reservoirs temporarily and then release it downstream. So it reduces the peak flow, which then works in conjunction with the levee system so we don't overtop the levees. Although we do have flowage easements for temporary storage, our reservoirs do have storage challenges because of where homes were built before zoning rules were established. And sometimes it's a balancing act to keep lakeside homes from flooding. The West Fork system, unfortunately, we didn't have any zoning powers. So up until counties had zoning authority, homes were able to be built within the 10, five year floodplain. So some homes do see damage on occasion. We, we try to balance the amount of damage versus the downstream effects. And it's always a, a give and take operation. It's an operation that includes a command center to monitor inflows and reservoir releases 24 seven, keep the public informed and share vital information with the National Weather Service until the flood threat passes. Public safety is another major concern that influences how much water is released downstream. One of the biggest factors we're concerned with is public safety that there's a number of county roads and, and bridges that again would flood if we release too much water. So we really try to balance how much we release uh, with, with that flooding so that we don't impact the, the public safety operations that go on during flood events. Not all flood events are created equal, and in 1949, Fort Worth experienced one of the worst floods in its history. I remember well, I was a youngster, of course, back then, when the flood of 49 in Fort Worth and what and the impact that had. I remember distinctly going with my father two or three places. One was to Colonial Country Club, which, of course, he built, and it, it was totally underwater. There were men, workers out there hanging from the trees, holding on for dear life. Things changed after that deadly flood. The United States Army Corps of Engineers stepped in and in the 1950s designed the floodway we see today. It was built by the Corps in the 1960s and early 70s, but it's up to the water district to operate and maintain. At 27 miles long, it's a huge task for sure. So the Army Corps of Engineers came in and built the floodway with the district serving as local sponsor, which means the district owns all the property, we own all the easements, and we provide the operation and maintenance of it with some oversight from the Army Corps of Engineers, again, to maintain that level of protection that was in the original design. Maintaining the integrity of the floodway has a lot of moving parts. 
One of the most important, taking care of the vegetation that covers the levees. It may not seem like a big deal, but that grass is the armor that keeps the soil in place. So one of the most labor intensive items that we do on the floodway, second to vegetation maintenance, is the debris removal. In the last calendar year, we removed 58 tons by hand collection of litter on the Fort Worth floodway. In addition to tackling litter, operations crews use heavy equipment to remove brush and debris that wash into the river, 194 tons in all last year. That debris is collected on our low water dams. So that's anything from trees to tires to refrigerators, brush, it's just all that, that, that clogs up our low water dams. Inspecting floodgates strategically placed along the levee is another task that takes place after every half inch rain. So the floodway contains 30 floodgate structures and each one of those structures is tied in some way or another to a sump area. Some are the definitive sumps that are basically basins that hold a 50 year rain event. Some are tied directly to the interior street drains. Basically what they do is when the, when the floodway is flowing heavy, when floodwaters are coming, as they get here, the floodgates are basically a one-way check valve and they don't allow the floodwaters from the river to back up into the city. The district's maintenance program also includes erosion repairs and sediment removal. Erosion is a constant battle as the river comes up and falls out rapidly. You do get erosion down towards the toe. We have programs going nearly year-round to correct that. It's a lot of work keeping the floodway in tip-top shape, but it's critical and it ensures that when floods do occur, it operates as it was designed. But there are challenges on the horizon and a solution in the works. Due to increases in population, more than 500,000 people since the floodway was first designed, lots more water is flowing into the river. More people means more rooftops and concrete and less ground for the water to soak into. But we are working with local entities to slow the flow. There's all sorts of ways where you can take that rainfall and instead of it hitting concrete and going straight to the river, there's ways of getting it to soak in where it is. The easiest ways are to have uh, local storage where you have pervious swales that capture some of the water and, and slightly larger structures uh, that again don't contain water for very long but allow the water to collect and, and then slowly be released rather than going into a stream all at one time. Adopting these practices, especially in newly developed areas, will help. But we've also been told by the Army Corps of Engineers that upgrades needed to happen. The choices involved raising the levees or rerouting the river. Instead of making a decision behind closed doors, we reached out to the public to see what they had to say. In 2001, community-wide, we held an enormous public input process, over 200 public meetings. And what the community generally said is, we recognize the river touches almost every one of our homes and our neighborhoods, but we would hope that our river could provide more for us. So we actually took that input, TRWD, worked with the Corps to go ahead and look at different options, vetted out those options, then took them back to the public. Huge four-day process of input from the community. And with the different options laid before the community, they're the ones who chose the TRV plant, the Central City Project. What they chose was to go ahead and reroute our river in the near downtown area. Rerouting for us means actually providing 2,400 acres of neighborhoods the safety they needed from the floods we know are going to occur here. So you spoke, we listened, and what's known as the Central City Plan is now becoming a reality. You may have seen some of the construction north of downtown, which was set in motion about a decade ago. The massive undertaking is a joint venture and involves coordination between the Water District, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the City of Fort Worth, and Tarrant County. It's a flood control project that will restore the same level of flood protection we had when the levees were originally designed. And we used a scale model the size of a football field to test it out. Here's how it works. The Central City Project is the federal project associated with rebuilding the federal floodway through the city of Fort Worth. Our purpose is to regain the same flood protection that we had originally when the project was designed back in the 50s. So right now what we have done is we've looked at the federal floodway. We found a, what we kind of call as a pinch point or an area within the floodway where water is pinched down and slows up. That is where the Clear Fork and the West Fork of the Trinity come together 
and it makes that big bend in the river right immediately north of the courthouse in downtown Fort Worth. So what we're doing is we're building a bypass channel that bypasses that loop and that original confluence. We'll put in three gates. Those three gates then will close during a flood. By doing so, we've cut out that big loop, so we've let the water flow straight. Water flowing straight can go faster and stays lower than being backed up in a big loop where it has to take longer to go through. Because of the way we designed the project with the gates, we're not going in and rechannelizing or digging out a bunch of the river to try to create more flow capacity. For the first time, by rerouting our river, not only is our community safer, but now the community has fantastic access to the waterfront edge. In addition to better access to the river, there are plenty more benefits for the public to enjoy because of this project. In order to reduce impacts for folks downstream, we've created more valley storage. These are places that can store flood water as it moves down the Trinity. And when it's not flooding, which is most of the time, you'll see parks or sports fields or even a restored forest habitat within Gateway Park. So we'll go from a community that lives near the river to actually one that's living on the river's edge. So it's something very different than we have today. The Central City Project is a result of years of planning and listening to the public. It offers residents and businesses an opportunity to reorient themselves to the Trinity, and it will allow for more development closer to the river. But more importantly, it helps us advance our flood protection mission to accommodate the region's anticipated growth. And so this project is a flood control project meant to manage uh, that growth and return us to the level of protection that we had when these levees were originally built.